Fork. There you go. Uh, and Fork is just a framework or a library that I made um, for Swift's new concurrency. So Swift came out with concurrency and it just allows for async await um, and you don't have to deal with uh, closures, callbacks, or life cycles of tasks in like combine or um, I guess Rx Swift or Reactive Swift, any of those. Um, so now it's just built into Swift. So you can just say a function is async or it's asynchronous, and then you'll just call it by using this nice await keyword. Okay. So right here, I've, this is a little snippet of just what's in the Swift book. Um, this is their example. Um, and they're showing right here that they have this asynchronous function to download a photo. And then they have this array of photo names that they're gonna download from. Um, they're calling it uh, three times, they get three photos and then they show them. So pretty easy example. And let me make this a little bit bigger too. I can use my full screen. Um, pretty easy example for there, but this is actually um, still synchronous in a way. Like it's kind of weird. Um, it will run first photo. It will download the first photo and then it'll wait and then once first photo is done, it will then download the second photo. Um, it doesn't block like the main thread or any task like that. It won't block the thread and it will go into some background task. But um, I don't think it's really the asynchronous code that you'd want for this. If you wanted to download three photos and noting here that they only hit three, there could be more in this array. So this, uh, this uh, solution is kind of finite for this example. Um, so to download all of them in parallel, and actually use this asynchronous process to its fullest potential. And I guess I would uh, also context say that it, like the Swift system in iOS or whatever OS system it's running on uh, will optimize. So it's not gonna paralyze download, you know, thousand uh, photo names if there were a thousand in this, it would do as much as it can in parallel. Um, so for here, you have to do this weird syntax. Instead of awaiting the function, you have to say async let. And so this is this kind of syntax for asynchronously uh, is instantiating, oh, sorry, instantiating a variable, um, but later awaiting it. So this is saying that it's an asynchronous um, kind of let, it's kind of a weird syntax, but later on when you use it, you have to await it. And so they do this really weird kind of syntax of they're awaiting all of this. Um, so, Let's take a step back and say, maybe I want to run three functions in parallel and they don't return something. So this is still valid, but I would kind of have to put the functions in an array and then await the array, but the array doesn't return anything. So it's, it's kind of like an anti-pattern for making it parallel. Um, so that's kind of the issue that Fork solves. Fork will take uh, input, one input, and it can optionally map that input into do two separate values. And then it will use two uh, asynchronous functions to kind of do it in parallel. So really quickly, if we scroll down, we'll just see this super basic example of, I give it a value of 10. So each of these functions, they're just closures. Um, they get the value of 10. So that's the dollar sign. Dollar sign zero is 10 for this case. Let's just imagine that. So for this left, output, it will take an input of an int, and it will give me an output of a Boolean. Um, it will just tell me if it's a multiple of two. This other output will really just actually just create a string from this int. So they are giving two separate values. They're not async. So this is the most uh, simple example. Um, it's really just mapping two different values and then being able to merge those two functions together in an asynchronous way. So these two functions can get the input and they can run in parallel without worrying about each other. And they return, in, or I guess output um, unique or not or whatever, they can do you know whatever. And then you just need to merge them back together. So you'll see right here, I have a Boolean and I just do a, a little thing of like, if the Boolean is true, then I just add the strings together. Otherwise I'll just return the strings. So then down here, I can just get the output of 10, 10 because the Boolean is true. It's a multiple of two and then it just adds the strings together. So that's a really simple example. Um, let me pull over kind of the code for this uh, because like, I, I just wanna quickly go over like how simple this is. It takes a left, right. And like I said, you can optionally map an input. So it'll take the value that you give it and then it'll, it'll be the input for the left. So like if you wanted to um, 
maybe modify or like let's say I give you an app configuration and it's like a really big object and you wanted to reduce the left fork and the right fork to only some service um, and they're like different like you could do that in a way um, but ideally you'll just pass in the value that both of them need and they can drive off of so this is like most just initializing code because really it's just a left and right um, and then this is the merge code so this is the thing that makes it in parallel so there's only like I guess it will in parallel wait for every single fork. So if you fork and then fork another fork, I have an example of this really quick. This is kind of annoying to talk about because it's so weird. Um, but like forking an array, if you wanted to have like this fork right here, you can only have two values. So there's a left and right. So maybe one returns another fork. So then you could in parallel three tasks. Um, so that's how you do that. Um, but like dealing with that, it's super annoying. Like it's more of a functionality thing. So then uh, there's two other examples that I'll just really quickly go through. It's forked actors. So you can actually have an actor that in theory is mutable on any thread uh, safely. So you don't have to worry about um, like doing a mutation of background thread and getting um, any kind of crash or anything like that. You can literally just mutate this value um, in both async processes, maybe one you fetch from a server and another you fetch from a local database and you mutate the same object and return it. Um, that's the example for forked actor. It just uses fork and actor. So it's like very light implementation. The last thing I'll talk about really quick is the really kind of powerful example of Swift does not support async map for each filter or anything like that. Um, it, kind of supports it out of the box, but um, really it's just for each and it's normally the four. Uh, so this uh, forked array, <laughs> this is kind of dense. So let me just go to the example really quick. Um, it actually runs every single value. And I guess the best example would be kind of this previous example of photo names. So before when we saw this, I'm sorry to move this around so much. Um, before when we saw this example, uh, we had to do this. And this is what Swift or Apple recommends, um, at least out of the box. Um, you can use a task group to get around this, but um, to run separate tasks in parallel, it's pretty difficult or pretty verbose in this sense. So to run every single download photos in parallel asynchronously, regardless of whatever it is, you can just use async map, which async map in a sense, and this is the last thing I'll say, because this is kind of annoying, um, but it will take this array of three elements or five elements, and it will split it into this tree structure. And this tree structure is a flat forked tree, I would call it. Um, and really, it just splits it into as many forks as it needs to run the entire array in parallel. And then it returns the array after everything's finished in uh, order and all modified or anything like that. So the time, what time, time? time but yeah um any questions i'll open it up. uh three minutes um three three that's good well, i that's started good. a little late but yeah no that's fine i'll open up to any questions because i kind of just ran through that um i'd love to run through any examples if i have any extra time and anyone's interested enough or wants to see an example um but yeah i'll open it i'll open the floor i asked a lot of questions so maybe i'll defer and see if anyone else has questions first that's smart, Tyler. If no one asks any questions, please. Okay, I have a couple questions. So um, you showed an example, like when you're doing the async map, what type of like array class is that thing that you're running? If photo names is what? It's just an wait. It's just an array of strings. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So their example was just photo names. So I just took it as an array of strings. And I mean, I assume that download photos would fetch from a server endpoint, and it would just pass in that um, name, and then it would download it. But yeah, this is just a mock implementation, just to kind of show the exact same code, or the exact same type structure. Um, okay. But yeah. So, okay, so if you ran, if you tried to run an async map method on uh, an array of strings, like you would get like a error, right? That says that that method doesn't exist because that's not how you yeah, do it. Yeah. So, or? yep. So if I take so, this array right here and I try to do it like a for each on it, 
Um, right now, Swift doesn't support um, this. So if I wanted to do like a task in here, and a task would be, you know, async. So it's going to yell at me for async. So then I'll go over here and just say await. Oops. It's oh, going to okay. say cannot pass an async function to a synchronous function. So all of these nice uh, for each map, compact map, all of these don't support async yet. Um, so that, that's the issue is there's no way to map um, unless you want to do it manually. Um, well, I guess there, there's some libraries and that stuff. But um, I'd say this is like the only one that I've seen for like in parallel. Um, but yeah. Okay. So then the solution. So if you're using this async map method, this is this a this is a method they have or one you wrote or what am I? I'm still. I'm... It's it's one that I wrote that oh. uses yeah yeah that uses fork to then parallel every single um, value and function. Okay. Okay. Got it. Cool. 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 All right, um, that answers my question. Okay, does anybody else have questions? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, ask a question. Sorry, I was just wondering, is anybody else using this besides you? It seems really interesting and really useful. Um, Did you hear that? Um, I, I think I heard that. Uh, is anyone using this besides me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, not at the moment. Um, I mean, I, I don't uh, know. I'm using it. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. That's, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean that as a slight whatsoever. I was just, I was just curious, you know. No, I need to plug it. But to be honest, I feel like it'll be Sherlocked by like uh, Apple and like a Swift update, um, because like I said before, you can use type group or task group to do it. Like you open this block uh, here. I'll just show it really quick because like. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of useful, but it's also not. I mean, but if an Apple or a Apple developer was here, he'd yell at me. Um, so you can do like task group and then group in. And so like, let's say I wanted to loop over the name of, you know, just this array and I'll just put one value in because whatever. Um, so then in here you'd say group dot add task. Oops. Oh, cool. Whatever. Okay. But it, pretty much you'd have to add the task like in here for each one. So you have to like loop through it. And then at the end of it, it like you can get the output, but I haven't figured out how to easily like get the output as uh, this does. Like this is very nice because if I wanted to switch this to just the map, like async map, like I said, it returns the output of any of these. So all of these could fetch from the server. So I guess my last example, and damn it, I totally forgot about this, is it's a uh, uh, app that downloads 100 pictures in parallel, and I show it in both uh, async um, task and normal way. So really quick, I'm sorry for taking extra time, but this is the normal way. So like to do it in normal async way, like you'd have to do this, or you could use mine and just do async for each. Um, so this would fetch all 100 in parallel, and they take the exact same time. So there is no loss in optimization. Cool. Any questions? I'm ending it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Zach. Uh, who are you passing the baton to?